Hi, welcome back all of you. Nana here and then we are into the next day's program on this efficient order management implementation. So today we are going to begin a back-to-back -back transfer actually. It's a very tough one. So we are going to transfer it from 002 or to 001 or. And we are transferring the material from one or to other or through your transfer orders now. I will now use the transfer order you route to transfer it. Fine. I will now click on share screen now. I'm going to share it. So the first activity is what we will now go there and then create an item. Fine. First of all, you know there's an item. Mm -hmm. So we'll now go there. We will now create an item. So no, right, the floating control. So let us now go there. Mm -hmm. We will now create an item. So the item has to be assigned to both the source and destination, actually. So if the source is 002 and the destination is 001, actually. I will now go to product management. I will now go to the product management. So go there. I will now go to the product management. And then you go to the product information management. So now we are in the process of creating a new item for this. Now go to the monitor process and then I'm refresh it. Okay. And the lower entities are running. We go there. I go there. So click on it. And then here, automatically go there. And then click on the create item. We are now going to create an item. Click on the create item. So we are now going to create an item actually. So let us now create an item actually. Click on the grade item. So go there. So yesterday we are used up to six actually. Fine, go there. So zero 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 is the R. Fine, go there. Is okay. Rule item class is also okay. Fine. Yeah, I think there is no problem at all with rule item class. Let us hope that it is no problem at all. Fine, go there. Click on okay. We'll now see whether if there is any problem is there or not. If nobody has fiddled around, what happens? It will not be having. Otherwise, you change it to automatic. You know, automatic is item class that will work very fine actually. So you have to get it as approved now. Fine. If it's coming as approved, it's okay. Fine. Go there. I will now say the T01. Fine. 07. I will now say B underscore 2. B underscore transfer. So back to back transfer is the item. Fine. T0107 is the one. So go there. I will now make it as what? Transfer. So back to back transfer is the item. Fine. Take a copy of it. And go there. Fine. Click on the description. And I'm putting on the description back to back transfer. So go there. It is now done. And then you go to the specifications. So go there and then click on the specifications. So in the specifications, what happens? You go there, go to the sales order page directly. You go to the sales order page and go to the sales and order management page. Here we have to enable the item for a back to back ordering now. Back to back must be enabled actually. And then since we are going to create a back to back ordering, so internally transferable must be yes, and then internal orders enabled must be yes. No, fine. These two must be yes, actual. Then only the transfer orders will be getting created, actual. Apart from your customer orders enabled, and then customer orders, customer orders enabled, fine. Customer ordered, and then customer orders enabled. This is the item defining attribute, this is the status attribute. Apart from these two attributes, we have to enable what? Internally transferable as well as internal transfer orders enabled. Fine. These two things must be on, actual. Fine. Back to back is enabled. Fine. So everything is done. Fine. It's all okay. And then go there. I will now go to the planning. Now, fine. So having done this, now fine. So these two are ensuring. Now, fine. Internally transferable and then internal transferable general. And then back to back is this. Now, fine. I will now go to the planning. I go to the planning. Now, fine. Click on the planning. In the planning, what happens? I will now give a planning time frame of what 50 days. That is, any sales orders is now asked for in the next 50 days, it will be honored actually. Not us. So the planning time frames is not made as a 50 days actually. So we are not done this. So apart from that, nothing else is required in the planning area now. The only one is required now. And then go to the purchasing pricing and then always have a habit of giving a what happens a yellow price actually. I will not say that. Even though we are not going to buy anything from the source or and always have a habit of giving a less price actually. Less price is 10 is okay. Fine with that. So on the sales and order panel. Sales and order management plane, what happens? The back to back is enabled as well as the internal transfer order is enabled. Fine. In the planning is 50 days, no fine. Brother. And the purchasing tab is then we are done it now. <laughs> fine. So this much of attributes are sufficient for us to make the item back to back transferable actually. Fine, brother. I go to the associations now. I go to the associations. In the association, I'm going to associate to both 001 and 002. I go to actions and then go to select NAC. So let me associate it to what? 001, 00, and then make a search now. It will get plenty of org now. I will now associate what? 001. There is my destination org. And then with the control, I will now choose the source also. 
zero zero two is the source. Fine. So from zero zero two Atlanta to Seattle, it is going to travel actually. Fine. Click on apply and then click on that by which what happens. The item is now created with the back to back enabled and then transfer orders enabled with the planning time frames also properly and then it is now assigned to both the source and destination. So give a save and close. So give a save and close by which what happens it is now completed. So we are now completed what the item. Now what we do is we go there and then we will now keep a stock in the source org. My source org is what 002. So I'm going to keep sufficient stock in the source so that what happens is that we can very well ship it to the destination. Basically. Shipping to the destination will not be a problem at all. Fine, go there, click on it. We are going there. Fine, click on it. I will now click on the home icon. <clears throat> I'll go to the space bank account. Now see whether the load entities have got getting very problem. Or not. So I already sent, ran on uh, concurrent actually. So on concurrent, we have to wait for the load to get completed actually. And the load has to get completed. Afterwards, only we can again run the concurrent actually. Fine, go on. Go there. So go there. I will now go to what? Supply chain execution. Now fine, go there. I will now go to the supply chain execution. I will now go to the supply chain execution and then I go to the inventory management. I go to the inventory management. Change the R to 002 now. You will now change the R to 002. So it is now in 001 now. I go there. So you click on it. And then we will now create what happens. You go to the manage item quantities via which what happens. We can change the R. You click on it. And then go to the manage item quantities from where what happens. We can now change the R to 002 now. This is a better method actually. Fine. Click on change org. So all the visions org do not need any data access at all. Remember, only your own orgs need a data access. Whereas visions org do not need any data access at all. Zero zero two is not changed actually. You cannot see in the talk it will be coming now. <clears throat> visions org do not need any data access. At all. It is all inbuilt actually. So it's all inbuilt. I will not go there. Click on it. I will not go to the create miscellaneous transaction. Let me keep 50 quantities now. Let us now keep 50 quantities over there. Right? So drop down. So I am in 002 R. Fine, go that Atlanta R. Fine, drop it down. I will not make a miscellaneous result now. Will not make a miscellaneous result. We are not making a miscellaneous result. Fine, go that one. And then you go there, click on it. I will not drop down the account now. Fine, click on the account. <clears throat> so we will now go to the account area. Fine, go that one. I will now choose one account now. Fine, click on it. So this account will be given by the financials actually. This is called offset account actually. So I'm now choosing one account now. Fine. Is a checking account is coming? Fine. Uh, I will now choose some other account now. <coughs> cash account I have now. I have one cash account. I'm choosing it now. Fine. But I am not sure about which account I should choose. I'm now choosing a cash account now. So as an offset account. So this account will be given. So whenever you are making a miscellaneous receipt, what happens? Uh, the offset account will be hit, and then what happens? Uh, it will be hitting the this is a con contra entry to the miscellaneous receipt actually. <laughs> So go there, drop it down, and then make it as yes, no fine. I'm not giving any price of this, no fine. So again, actually, what happens? It does be costed actually. Fine, go there, costing. We are not. We have already seen everything now. Fine, go there, click on plus now. We are not looking into the costing part. No fine, click on plus. So click on plus, and then what happens? You go there. The T zero one zero seven is the one. Fine, give it up. It is on the second org. Remember the top. What happens is the second org. So there is a source org for us. No fine, click on it. Item is not having any control. No fine, click on it. I will now expand it. And then here I will not keep it on stores now. Let me keep it on stores now. Fine, go there. So 50 quantities I'm going to keep it on stores. 50 quantities I'm not going to keep it on stores. Fine, class away now. Fine, but which what happens? Sir? The item is ready in both the orgs, and then the stock is also ready in the stores now. Fine, click on submit. So the item is now submitted. Item stock is also ready now. Fine, click on it. So item stock is now ready. In the meantime, what happens? You know, go there. Fine. There's no problem, no issues. Now you know, go to the mon process because I run one concurrent for collecting all. Actually, I made a full collection. Actually, so it is a concurrent. Fine. It's now still running now. So we had to wait for this concurrence to complete. Then only what happens? We can again launch the collection now. Fine. Again, we can launch the collection. Fine. So why it is it? So it's still running. Fine. So we can't. What happens? Do one more concurrent. Actually, fine. We had to wait for this now. So everything has been completed now. Fine. So we had to bring the data into the planning system. So before we bring in, we will not see some theory actually. We'll not go there. We'll not have a look at the theory. No, fine, click on it. We'll not go there. We'll not have a look at the theory. We'll not go there. We'll not look at the theory part of it. No, click on it. For a transfer order theory. Go there, click on it. I will not go to what CUCM training. I will not open order management of fine fusion order management. Fusion order management documentation will opened up. I will not open the shipping now. So I will not open up the shipping rules now. Fine. So 
OUSCM, see your CM training and then fusion order management documentation and then I'm opening the shipping and then I'm opening the shipping rules now, fine, double click on it. So let me open up the shipping rules. <clears throat> so we are now opening the shipping rules. Now. Thank you. This is what I'm opening it up. Thank you. So we are opening the shipping rules. <clears throat> so the shipping is really very complex actually. It is not so easy actually. So in this case, what happens is we are now going to have only one, uh, what happens, the detail from the transfer order is going to come in. In reality, whenever it's a sales order, what happens, there will be multiple details will be coming and then hitting the filtering zone, actually. So once when you have multiple details knocking the filtering zone, what happens, uh, the person who is in charge of shipping will now look at how much of packing material is having, you know, fine. So how much of packing material is having, it. what are the equipment availability, fine, manpower, resources like power, water, compressor, etc., etc. You will now see everything, depending upon that, you will now say up to what he will now pick, pack, and then ship, actually. <laughs> that is what he will do. So he will now say the sales orders up to let us say today is what uh, today is what twenty first. So up to tenth I can do it now, fine. Because of a, what happens a problem on any of these things now, fine. Manpower is not available, resources is not available. So up to tenth, whatever the sales order needs the material, fine. The scheduled ship date up to tenth I can very well do it. So you can even decide on this one. or what happens the sales order number or otherwise the schedule ship date or requested date. So one of them, he will now put the criterion criteria or multiple criteria or also he will now put. Other, he will now fill it up. So the, let us say there are 100 details are there. And then once when he puts these criteria on the filtering zone, so out of 100, everything will not pass the filtering area. So let us say that only 1 to 10 are passing. <clears throat> so it is 1 to 10 passing the filtering zone. And then they will come and then hit the prior decision zone. So the prioritization zone is basically for what uh, is now going to check the eligibility of each and every detail. Now. The eligible details are sorted and then sequenced for the priority for allocation actually. Fine, we had allocated actually. We are going to sort the incoming details actually. So you will now say a company is having a policy of what? First come, first serve. Fine. When you sort it out, whichever sales order has been booked first, that will be coming at the top actually. The next one, next one. Or otherwise, what happens? Depending upon the outstanding invoice. So, let us say the third detail is now having a very low, small outstanding, then that will be coming on the top now. Then next words, sixth, afterwards eighth, then afterwards one. Like that, what happens? It will be sorting. So sorting will now take place either on the sales order number or on the outstanding amount or shipment priority or the scheduled ship date. So the shipping in charge will now decide the way in which it has to be sorted actually. So that will be done. So that is then an RSR. Fine. RSR is responsible for doing it. Fine. Release sequence rule is responsible. So once when RSR is done, what happens? The incoming details will be sorted and then it will be given to the grouping zone actually. So the grouping zone is mainly for what? Easy and error-free staging actually. So let us say it is now sorted like this. Now let us say six is first, next two, next nine, next seven, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So nothing will be what happens left out. When you sort, everything will be coming out. So all the things will be coming to the prioritization. So grouping zone basically. <laughs> So to six, two, nine, seven, et cetera, et cetera, everything will be coming to the grouping zone. And then let us say six and seven has to go to Delhi. So what happens? The inventory in charge will now keep six and seven together in one corner. Two and nine has to go to Bombay. He will now keep it in one corner. So that once when the Delhi vehicle comes in, what happens is there won't be any wrong shipment actually. So the biggest problem in the shipping area is what wrong shipment. Delhi item will be going to Calcutta. Calcutta will now go to Bombay. Fine, like that. It will now keep on uh, what happens? The getting shuffled actually. So to avoid the mistake of wrong shipping, the grouping zone is going to what happens, help it now. So there are two rules are there. One is the RSR, one is the PSGR now. Fine. One is the RSR, one is the PSGR. So there is one example here. If all details are asked for item one, 100 quantities, and the inventory availability is only 300 liters. Then 629 only will be allocated. Even though 6 and 9 are grouped together for Delhi, 7 will not get the material because there is no having a fourth priority. <laughs> And the prioritization zone has given a fourth priority. <coughs> and so what happens? There is a shortage. We have only 300. And so detailed seven will not be getting it, even though grouping zone has grouped together. So it will not be allocated based upon the grouping zone, but upon the prioritization zone. So the prioritization zone decides which has to be allocated material. And then if the material is allocated, then it will not group and then keep it. Otherwise, six will be alone. And then two and nine will be together, actually. So that way it works actually. And then finally, what happens? The whole thing will be going to the inventory picking rule actually. So middle allocation based on the first in first order or last in first order. Fine. So uh, well, the picking rule will be coming. So picking rule will be coming. 
So picking rule will be doing what happens the allocation basically. Fine. It will be doing the allocation actually. So one is the prioritization here and then one is the allocation. So as far as management is concerned, there are only two rules which are really important. One is the RSR, the release sequence rule. One is the PR. Fine. It is for allocation actually. RSR is for shuffling and then decides the priority. PR is for allocation actually. <clears throat> How you want to allocate the middle lecture. Whereas the PSGR is only for easy and error-free staging. So it doesn't have much of an importance as far as the management is concerned. So let's say there is a case, let's say we need 1000 material. The availability is 1200. And then RSR is going to say, first give it to 2, then 9, then 1, then 7, afterwards 10. It will not shuffle and then give it to you. And then it is having no significance because everybody is going to get the material because we have got excess material. And so RSR's recommendation is not significant at all for the management action. Whereas PR's recommendation is significant because not everything is going to go away. We are going to say, what am I First empty the January stock, then after the February stock, then March stock. So something is going to remain in the inventory. And so PR's recommendation becomes significant in this case, actually. For a 1,000, 1,200 requirement, what happens? This is basically bad. On the contrary, <clears throat> we have 700 commodities required, whereas what happens? The availability is only 500. So everybody will not get required. So RSR's recommendation becomes a significant one. Whereas the PR's recommendation is not significant because everything is going to be allocated. And so it is not significant. And then the third scenario is what? We have 850 quantities required and then exactly 820 quantities available. So then both the things are insignificant actually. RSR, everybody will not get the material. Everybody will be allocated. Everybody will be prioritized basically. And then everybody will be allocated also. So both the things will now become insignificant actually. So there are some other examples basically. Fine, all right. So in reality, what happens, it will be very, very tough to what happens to sit and then design how you want to prioritize sales order wise or outstanding invoice wise or shipment priority or schedule date. So I had to sit, think, think, and I said, we normally, what happens, we used to have a discussion with the end client and then it took around one week for us to design the priority. And then the picking rule also, what happens, we, we have taken a longer time actually. <clears throat> so that way, what happens, we did it up. So that way we'll do it. And so what happens, we had to go and then create the rules actually nothing on it so let us not go there and then create the rules actually nothing on it so let us not go there and then create the rule first of all the rsr so we are not going to create the rsr the rsr rule we are going to create now click on it we are not going to the system now click on it now go there click on it so we will now go to the month class we will now see what how much of progress it has happened now click on it iid so since the load is still running away, we can't help it now. So we had to wait for this concurrence to complete now. So go there. So let us now go there and then go to the OU of inventory management and then go there. So we will now go and then uh, create our RSR. Now. Fine, click on setup and maintenance. You go to the setup and maintenance and then do this. Setup and maintenance. And then here we are now going to create our RSR. Now. Fine, click on it. <coughs> so click on search. Fine, click on search. And then what happens? You go there. Ma what happens? There? Manage fine. Release percentage fine. Sequence percentage fine. Rule percentage. Release sequence percentage fine. Rule percentage. So release sequence rule is the one. I want to get it. Fine. Manage release sequence rule. So let us now create our release sequence rule. Fine. Why? Running what T zero one is the one. So let us now create our release sequence rule. Fine. Click on plus. I am going to create our release sequence rule. I'm creating it now. The T01. Fine. I will not say RSR. So we will now be discussing with the end client regarding this. Now, fine, on it. How do you want it? Now, fine, on it. At least. I will not say I'm not giving only one priority. Let's say sales order. And then I will not make it as ascending. It may be ascending, descending. There are multiple priorities are there. So this is only you have to what happens to do an R and D and then do it accordingly. Fine. Normally, only one priority will be given. Now, fine, so click on save and close by which what happens there. The RSR is now created now. We are not created the RSM. Next is what PSGR. I click on the one. We'll now go and then create our PSGR. Right? Manage. Right? Pick. Find. Right? Slip. Percentage. Find. Right? Manage pixel. This is for error easy and error free staging actually. Manage pixel grouping about PSGR. We are going to create it. Right? Click on it. So click on plus. We'll now discuss the inventory in charges, how they want to group it actually in one corner. We'll now say the T01. We'll now say is that. PSGR. It is a PSGR. So take a copy of it and then put the description. So I will now say group by order number as well as the customer. Fine. 
so multiple <coughs> ways of grouping together of fine mother so whichever way the end client wants it accordingly can do work or work center wise work area wise also we can do it now mind don't so click on save and close so the psgr is also made now and then what happens we will now go there and then we will now perform a ship confirmation role next is what the big one is what pick ship confirmation role now. so before we go to the ship confirmation role there is one theory there of fine don't we have one theory on this one fine don't I don't see whether I have this. My interface to stop is a one kind of CSM training. I will now open up this one kind of one. I will now open up order management documentation. Shipping. So we have one interface trip stop that is not available here. I have to bring it from some other place actually. I will now go there and click on it. I will now find out an e-business documentation. I have one e-business documentation. I will now say E B S. E B S instance set up. I know that. E B S inventory. E B S OEM training. I will now open up the E B S OEM training. So here I will now say I T S. Right. I T S. Otherwise, I will now, I will now say interface trip stop. OEM interface trip stop. No man. This is the one. So let me take a copy of it now. I will not what I was take a copy of it and interface to store and ding all of it. I will not go there. Thank you on it. And it's a very important document. No, thank you on it. See you SEM training and go there. I will now open up my order management documentation, which for open now open the shipping and go there. I will now paste it over here. So let me open up the interface to stop. The beautiful document you find fantastic document. So let me upload it into your uh, this thing also. Fine. I will now go there. So let me upload because I will not forget it actually. I will not go to what I will not upload it also. Google dot com. Let me upload this document also for you. Okay, go to the main drive. Go there. Open up my system. Click on it. And then here. Last modified. So let me open up my CUCM training now. So a very important one. CUCM training. Mm -hmm. Go there. Simple one. So CUCM training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't have visible, you know, I'll not go on and query for this, right? CU SCM. If I go on and query, I know now coming. If I click on it, open it up, then open it up again. <clears throat> In which I will now open up my fusion order management documentation. So, in which whatever I will now open up the shipping now. Fine, the shipping, whatever I will now I upload the interface file upload, and then let me upload the uh, whatever the, you can go to the OUSCM, CUCM training. Open up my <laughs> fusion order management documentation, shipping, and then interface trip stop. <laughs> a very important document. Thank you. Open so open it up because this is a must actually. You must have it. Interface trip stop. We will now see what exactly it is. You know how you know, go that you know how to get what is the trip stop. So from the second org, we are now shipping to the first org actually. So before doing it, what happens? It will not go to what? Uh, will not have a look at it. Uh, advanced shipping is there. Fine, item validation, all this shopping. Fine. I will not go to the shipping now. Fine. I will not open up the shipping now. Fine. Click on the shipping. So if you open up the shipping, <clears throat> so once when you launch the pick release, it will be picked and then it will be confirmed also. <clears throat> then afterwards, you are going to ship confirm it. So once when you ship confirm it, the vehicle will now move from the source to the destination actually. <clears throat> so once when it goes from source to destination, then after it reaches the destination, he has to the driver has to give a call to you that I have reached the destination, sir. Then what happens? Uh, the interface trip stop will be run by the, uh, the your shipping manager actually. This is what is this place I might want. Now have a look at it. Uh, you go there. I don't know how I look at the interface trip stop. Open up the interface trip stop. So let me open up the interface trip stop. So now what I was 
if I do not defer the interface, I'm not, I'm not, or I'm not, if I defer the interface, right? do not defer means what? It will be getting interface to oriented directly. If I defer the interface, what happens? Uh, ITS is deferred. That is what interface trip stop is not deferred actually. And then it will now wait for the customer's acceptance. In our case, what happens? The driver will be giving a phone call. And then we will not run the interface trip stop manually. Will not run the interface trip stop manually. Then the data will now progress to interface. Otherwise, what happens? It will be in a shipped state as only. It is the usual, what happens? Uh, uh, differing because without the vehicle reaching the destination uh, <coughs> gate, <coughs> if you allow the what happens system to what happens the interface it, then what happens without even vehicle reaching it, what happens the we can even make the transaction on the destination or but vehicle has not really reached it. So many companies prefer that what happens, you have to defer this no fine the orders. So this we are going to set up no fine. We are going to defer the interface no fine. No go that on it. No go to the stage no fine click on it. No go that on it. And then here what I do is I will not go that. So I will not say manage ship confirmation rules. Manage percentage fine. Ship percentage fine. Confirm percentage fine. In the manage ship confirmation rules, what I'm going to do is I will not click on the manage ship confirmation rules. And then here I am now going to defer the interface actually. So click on plus one. One auto ship is there, but I will not make a my T01, fine. My T01, right? I will now say ship confirmation rule. So only when the vehicle reaches there and then the driver gives you a call, then only you will know what happens to run it manually actually. So go that take over it and then click on it. And then here, defer sending the inventory updates to the integrated application. This is what the tick mark. So it will never send what happens the inventory update at all. Fine. So the shipping execution will not be interfaced to order entry at all till you run the interface manually. That's called the send shipment advice. So this is a preferred method for many, many companies because what happens? Once when you ship it, if this is not there, what happens in the destination or it will not say it is interfaced. And so what happens? We can very well progress the order. That is not correct at all. Because vehicle might have got punctured and then they're now lying on the road. And then the system says that what happens is already delivered in the destination or they will not start to process now. But without material, if they start to process, it will be a big problem actually. So that is why what happens, they differ it. So the driver has to say that, sir, I have delivered it in the gate of the organization. So then what happens is they will not run this interface now, right? So then what happens, it will be going to interface. Otherwise, what happens, it will be showing as only shipped, but it is not interface to order entry at all. This is a very famous one. It's not done now, right? it's not deferred actually. So click on seven close. So the ship confirmation rule is now deferring the interface to order entry now, right? Click on seven close. It's not done. Then finally, what happens? We will now go on and make our shipping parameters. Okay, click on it now. Now go there. Manage shipping parameters. Manage percentage main. Ship percentage main. Parameter percentage main. We will now go to the manage shipping parameters. On fine, click on it. We will now go there. And then we will now click on it. And then we will now do the shipping parameters for that. What happens? The source org. Fine. The source org is what? 0, 0, 2 only. Fine. I mean, the source org only. The shipping parameter. Fine. Weight, weight, and volume. Fine, everything is there. Fine, everything is there. Fine, it's all done. Now, fine, for you, and then go there. And then here, what happens? The packing slip number, documentation sequence category. You know, packing slip document sequence is not required. Actually, fine, these things are not required. And go there, on it, and then go there. So release sequence rule. Whatever you go there, I will not put my T zero on RSR. Pick slip grouping rule. I go there. I will not put my P T zero on these are. And then here in the bottom, what happens? The top, what happens? I will not say if the ship confirmation rule. Drop it down. I will not choose mine. <clears throat> I will also T01. Here it is not going to defer it actually. It's not going to defer the interface to the destination or no fine on it. No going to defer there is no fine that point. So this is all no fine on it. And then the staging submit the staging is okay, fine for that. Everything is okay, fine. Shipping method is okay, fine. Uh, the customer is also okay, fine. The remaining are all okay, fine. Everything is okay. <clears throat> the remaining don't touch anything at all. So we are not changing the ship confirmation rule, fine. And then afterwards, what happens? We did what? Uh, the RSR and PSGR were changed, and then the ship confirmation rule also were changed. Right? Fine, this many only have changed. Now, fine, click on it. No, no, no. On the 002 org, that is the shipping org, actually. Fine, click on seven close. Fine. Now, going to work as per hours. Now, fine, click on seven close. So, the shipping is now area is fully set. It's a very, very complex one. Now, fine, click on it. We'll now go there and then see whether all the concurrence are completed. Now, fine, fine, fine. Click on refresh. Now, I'm not seeing whether everything is now completed. <laughs> So 
load entity is now coming in fine. Perform collections post act, post process actions is now coming fine. Afterwards, what happens? It will be purging the data actually. So load is now completed. Afterwards, what happens? It will be purging the data actually. So one, when this is completed, we can very well collect our data, our rather item data as well as the on-hand data. We can very well collect it actually. Perform collections post processing. So there is nothing now fine because one full cycle has to be done manually actually. So we have to do one full cycle manually. <laughs> so now I am now waiting for what? Uh, one purge. Uh, this thing has to run now fine. I am now waiting for this now fine. So we have to wait for the purging of the staging table activity. So once when that comes, what happens? The whole activity is now complete now fine. Let us now wait for some time now fine. Click on it. So worker to delete stage data is the last set of concurrent which you have run now fine. We are now run a complete collection actually. So worker delete stage data is now completed. So everything is now completed. So now what I do is I will now log out and log in and then perform a fresh collection actually. I will now go there. Right? I will now log out and log in. Sign out and sign in now. <clears throat> I will now perform a fresh collection for our new item and then on hand actually. So now we can selectively collect actually. One full collection has to be done on any system actually. And then afterwards, what you can do is we can now run a selectively collect. And then here, we'll now go there and then selectively collect actually. We go there. I will now go to the supply chain planning. I will now go to the supply chain planning. One full collection has to be done. Okay. Supply chain planning. And then go there. Plan inputs. And then I will now perform a collection. So you click on it. And then here, we go there and then click on collect planning data. We are not going to collect the planning data. So we will not collect the planning data. Fine. One full collection has already been done. I'm going to turn it. I will not get always. And then whenever you're collecting it, always collect on a targeted block. Right? Always collect on a targeted block. The change will not be that good, actually. And targeted is good. So here, I'm not going to collect only the item. Now. Fine. Items I'm going to collect. I'm not collecting only items. And then in the supply planning data, what happens? I will not collect only the on it. Else. So that what happens, it will be somewhat fast actually. One full collection has been done. In the reference data, what happens if you have an item on a targeted version and then in the supply planning data on a on and So both the things will be collected and go there. Go down and then click on survey. This will be somewhat fast actually. So only two things are getting collected actually. If I click on it. And then we can even go and then monitor this now. You click on the home icon. And then you go to the scheduled process. I click on it. You now go to the tools. You go to the tools. Now fine, go to the tools. You go to the tools. Now fine, click on the tools. And then you go to the what's called scheduled process. And click on the scheduled process. <clears throat> so we are now going to the scheduled process. And then query on your SCM 15. SCM 15 is a user. Now fine, go on search now. You're now searching for it. So now what happens? Uh, we are now going to do it, and then once when this is done, so SCA 15 is not coming. So the extraction is not got completed. Now the load will now begin now. So extraction is gone. Only some few things are there. Fine, so don't have anything much to extract actually. Now the load will begin actually. So once when the load begins, what happens? You can go there, right click, and then duplicate, and then you can now see that will be getting loaded actually. So we will now go and then set up the GOP. We have to go and then set up our GOP. So go to the monitor process and then go there and click on it. We will now set up the GOP once when the load gets completed. So load has started actually. Fine. Normally load will be taking a long time actually. Extraction itself will not run for a long time. But since there is only, only item and on hand, that means the load has started. We will now go and then see whether the item has got loaded into the planning system or not. Fine. Go that on it. We will now go to the welcome. Now. Fine. Go ahead. I will now click on the home icon. Deep. And then I will now go to the supply chain planning and then plan inputs. I will now go to the supply chain planning. I will go to the what? Supply chain planning. I will now go to the what? Supply chain planning. And then go to the plan inputs. And then see whether the data has now come into the planning area or not. Because this comes under planning actually. If I go to the what? The item starts with T01. It is a zero 07 actually. So click on search. So we got only one item. Now click on search now and we'll see. But it has come along. So we have got a back to back transfer is now coming. 
So the back-to-back -back transfer is available on 001, 002, as well as 000 also. That is the mass swap. So the item has reached the planning area. Now we can go ahead and then perform the setups for the GOP actually. Fine. Back to back transfer is available on both the offs. So 002 is the source or 001 is the destination or fine item is available everywhere. So let us now begin our GOV setup. Now, fine. There are three GOP setups are there. Fine, click on the home icon. You will now go to the order management. You will now go to the order management and then perform the setup. Order management. So go there, click on it. You will now go to the order management. So next time when you're running it, it is fast actually because first time only you're collecting everything. Next time, what happens? We can selectively collect actually. So go there, click on it. We have to go to the order management. So we go to the order management now. Click on order management, and then here go to the GOP now. You go to the GOP. The first one is what ATP role. It is called the supply chain ATP actually. We have to create a supply chain ATP actually. So we'll be creating a supply chain ATP for a back-to-back -back transfer actually. And click on it. So we'll now make a supply chain ATP actually. Click on it. And then here, probably you go there and click on the manage ATP rules in the top. Now click on it. And then click on plus. So click on plus now. Click on plus. And then I'll now say the T01. I know is the supply chain ATP. Supply chain ATP. Supply chain ATP. Go that to it. So take a copy of it and then put in the description. And there are very many ways of promising attributes now. Fine. Enable everything now. Fine. Go there. Such components and resources, fine. Enable profitable to promise, fine. Go there. Respect to location constraints, fine. Go there. Switch. So always enable all these things, fine. Because some of them may uh, give a problem on basically fine. on the supply chain availability search, fine. Go there. So lead time based also you can do it, but infinite. Infinite we already seen now, fine. Now, what are we doing? It? This is again a very big topic on man manufacturing, actually. Go there. And then always enable all the supply and demand types. Okay? Always demand. Whether you are using it or not, doesn't matter because at least time, you can very well use it actually. Enable all the supply and demand types. So it is now going to perform a balancing between all the demand, supply and demand types. And then this is from a, what's called the planning perspective. Infinite availability time frames. Make it as a user defined. And then here, what I make it as 50 days now. Click on make it as 50 days. And then here also you put as 50. Is also 50 now. Fine, click on 50. And then go down. Fine, click on ATP time frames specification. Again, user defined and then make it as 50. This works very well for a normal order management. But if you're having planning also installed, then what happens? They will be teaching about everything on this now. The setups. This uh, time frame setups will be all be fully taught in the planning training actually. But apart from that, what happens? The planning is not there. This setup will now work very excellently for a pure order management actually. Fine. Do not deviate from this and then do not make a lot of R&D. If you make an R&D and then if you're getting uh, whatever is the problem, it will be very difficult. Now. And this will definitely work now because it is a tested one actually. These setups are tested ones and so it will work very fine actually. And then you go to the ATP rule assignment. Now, fine. ATP rule criteria is not done. Fine. Click on the ATP rule assignments. You go to the ATP rule assignments and then click on plus. Now. Click on plus. And then here, always go for item R. Now. <clears throat> Some people also using category also fine. If there are a huge number of items, what happens? The category is the best method. If the whole item, what happens is now coming under 15 categories, then you can even go for a category association because I have now seen one of the implementations in uh, Saudi Arabia where we have gone for support. They have done everything on a category because thousands and thousands of items is not possible to make an entry over, you know. Fine. So category wise is very easy actually. Fine, they have done it like this. So. Depending upon the volume of what happens uh, your uh, database, basically, then choose either category item. But item and organizations are very rarely used. I never seen anywhere item organizations assignment is not done now. Fine, go there. So item and organization may go there. Item or individually. Fine, go there. So go the organization is what? 001. And go there. Click on it. And then assigned item is what? T01. And then give it a have now. Fine, click on it. And then drop it down. And then make a search. Now fine, click on search. And search for a T01. 07 will be coming now. If I click on it, select it and then click on OK. And then the item is assigned for the second or also. If I click on plus. Wherever it is assigned, wherever it is required for this, now click on it. So we need it for both the source and destination actually. Mm -hmm. 002 and go that on it. And then again drop it down and then make a search. Now if I click on it. So click on search. And then go there. Is the T01? 01. And then make a search. That is 0107 will be coming fine. Click on OK. That's it. Fine. So we are involved only in these two arcs. 
this is item fine for that so we are not doing it fine for every set we are doing it fine so my supply chain adp is now complete for the criteria and then the assignment now item r is the best level fine if you want you can even search try on then do on the category also but before doing an experiment for the client you do it on a test system and see whether the category works well or not so click on save and close now fine by which what am i the first activity of what creating the atp rule is now complete atp rule is now complete it is now done now and then afterwards what am i go there click on done now. now what am i we are now going to create a sourcing rule now. for make buy and transfer we have got two two sourcing rules actually mm -hmm. thank you on it we'll have two two sourcing rules thank you on it and then click on it manage sourcing rules we'll have two two sourcing rules so click on it so click on plus so I will not say it's a T01, fine. <clears throat> I will not say transfer from transfer from 001 to 0, 002 to 01. And always uh, write a meaningful name so that what happens by looking at the rule name itself, we can understand about what this is going to do now. And 2 to 1, we are going to transfer. Otherwise, it will be very difficult now. I don't want it. So transfer will always local now, fine. Transfer will not be global. Purchasing will be global and then transfer to customer is global. Remember, transfer to customer is global and then purchasing is global. Whereas uh, transfer from analog to this org is what local now. Fine, make it local now. So organization is what? 002. So from this org only we are going to do it. Fine, click on it. Go there. Fine, click on plus now. Go there. <clears throat> One second now. Fine, click on it. To go there it is the organization which is now the source organization fine go there the organization fine go there come on and then good actions and then go to add row you're not going to perform a transfer now fine click on it you know say transfer from transfer from organizations what zero zero one no you give a zero zero one fine go there come on it and then allocation percentage is what go there it's going to be hundred percent transfer from is zero zero two actually fine so that means what the owning organization must be a destination organization actually I will not give a cancel of mine. The owning organization must be a destination organization. Fine, give an answer. The owning organization must be a destination. Give an answer. I click on plus one. Go there. I will now say is a T01. Fine. Transfer from 002 to 001. So I'm giving it a fine component. Take off it. Description. Paste it. Is a local and then. This is the owning organization of the material actually, fine, 001. So it's going to own it actually, if I click on plus now. Plus data is coming, fine, go to actions and go to add a row. Go and add a row. And here, what I was, I go to transfer from 002. 002. We are going to transfer it from 002. And then go there. My allocation percentage is what? 100% and the shipping method is not required. And that's it, fine. So we have made a local rule where the destination is the what happens the owner of this rule actually the owner you are going to transfer it from 002 to 001 actually so this rule is now made so we had to make two rules now fine one for the transfer and then one for shipping to the customers now fine okay. so click on it drop it on and then you'll now give a what save and close now so click on save and close by which what happens it is not done now. <clears throat> and then we'll now make one rule for what happens the shipping to the customers fine click on plus you're going to make one more rule for shipping to the customer. I will click on it. I will not go there. I click on it. You got T01. I will now say ship to customer. Ship to customer. I'm going to make it. Now I click on it. Ship to customer. Take off it. And then put on the description. Go there. Is a global. Shipping always global. Purchasing and shipping are global actually. So click on plus one. And then go there. You click on actions. And then go to add a row, like we want to and then drop it on. And I was, I'll not say transfer from row. <coughs> fine. It's again a transfer from only. Fine. Go there. So ship to customer basically. Fine. Go there. I will not. And I was, it's a global one. Fine. Global is basically ship to customer. Now. Fine. Go there. Transfer now. Fine. Click on transfer. So global transfer room is always what happens a ship to customer actually. Remember 001. And then go there. And then all locations what 100%. So you can say oh, how you know that it is going to ship to only the customer. Fine, there's a way it is written actually. Fine, transfer from 001 to customer only. Fine, that is how a global rule will only transfer it to customer only. Fine, what else? That's how it is written actually. So go that click on it. So give a save and close by which what happens the both the rules are written. 
So we will have two two rules for make buy and transfer. Whereas for the drop ship, you will have only one rule. So at the time of drop ship, you will understand it now. So now what happens? Both the rules are made now. Now we have to do the assignment set actually. If you want. So before you do the assignment set, what you do is we will go there. You will have a profile actually. That profile will now point into an assignment set. In that assignment set, we had to have everything. Now, frankly, consider our main We'll now see the profile is pointing to which assignment set actually the vision and so we had to work on the vision only and click on it and go there click on it and then click on setup and maintenance search and then go there we will now say manage and manage and then what happens it admin profile so we go to admin profile now and manage admin profile is the one time go there it we'll now go to manage admin profile and click on it we go there and click on admin profile so we go to the admin profile and then here what happens? You go for what MSP default. So we go there and then query the MSP default. We click on search. So we are going to search for it. Find MSP default. We are going to search for it. So here it now points to one assignment set. So starting on global order promising now. So we have to write all our rules only in this place now. Fine. So Vision is using this global order promising. Fine for that. So do not modify anything at all. Fine. Keep it as such. Fine. So global order promising. So Vision is using on the MSP default profile, fine, on the admin profiles, you know, for MSP default assignment set, fine, orders, and then using the global order form, using. So let now give a cancel, and then let now query this now, fine, click on it. So click on that now. <clears throat> let now go to the home icon, now, fine, click on the home icon. And then we'll now come again back to the order management, and then go to the GOP now, fine, order management, and then go to the global order form, using. This is the final setup on this now, fine, the third setup on the GOP, and go to the so first is ADP rule, next is sourcing rule, next is assignment set. Fine, these three setups are done now very properly. So once when it is done, what happens? We'll now perform a final connection actually. Fine, click on it. Now go there. Fine, click on it. And then go there. I will now go to the manage assignment sets. So click on the manage assignment sets. Fine, go there. Click on the manage assignment sets. Let me query my global order form is in. GL rule B A L order. Fine. G and O or capital one. Fine, click on search. It will be coming. Fine, click on it. And then click on it. We are having plenty of entries over here now, and don't worry about it. So make your entry also. So we'll have two two entries for make buy and transfer. So for transfer also, we'll have two entries. Make on first. No, make two entries. No, make on it. First is what item R. Item R. I'm going to make it. No, make on it. So the organization is what uh, we are going to receive on zero zero one. No, make on it. The zero zero one we are going to receive. No, item is what T zero one zero seven. Then give a tab now. And then here I'm going to use the sourcing rule. Now fine, click on it. The sourcing rule. I will now say T01. <clears throat> and then give a tab. So I will now say transfer from 002 to 001. That is the one. So this rule will now transfer the material from 002 to 001. Now fine. No done. And then click on plus. Now I am going to ship it to the customer. Now fine, click on it. So shipping to the customer is always item. Item level, you are going to ship it now. So item R, we are going to receive it. Either by what I'm say. Make by a transfer. Now, item is for shipping actually. If I'm going to click on it, I will now get the T0107 and then give a tab. Now, I click on tab. And then here, what I'm going to go to the sourcing rule. Now. Type is what sourcing rule. BOD is a bill of distribution, the very big level of uh, uh, what I'm the supply chain distribution actually. It's a very complex one that will be used only by the planning engine. So, don't go there. If I go to the sourcing rule now. T01 and give a tab now. So, this is basically for ship to customer. And that's it. So we have now completed all the setups of GOP actually fine. ADP rules, sourcing rules, and assignment set. Assignment set will have two, two entries. One is item org and then item org. Click on it. We got multiple levels. Uh, do not experiment before the customer. Now, fine. You can even experiment outside now. There are plenty of levels of that. Fine. If you want to experiment, you experiment on those levels outside and then not with the customer actually. Hmm. I'm that. So click on save and close now. Fine, but it's not completed. Now. So having done this, what happens if we have to collect this now? Fine. We had to collect this also. Fine, go there. No, save it close. It's all done now. <clears throat> now we had to collect it actually. And click on it. So click on the home icon and then let us now perform a collection actually. So go there, click on it. We'll now go on and perform a collection actually. So we had to go on and collect it actually. Fine. Go to the, we'll now go to the supply chain planning. Mm -hmm. Supply chain planning. And then go to the plan inputs and then we're going to collect it actually. So click on it. Let us now collect it. Fine, go there, click on it. Collect planning data is the one. Collect planning data the one fine go that click on collect collect planning data <clears throat> so drop down and then make it to the OPS now fine go there again 
targeted. So this time what happens, this is called order orchestration reference object. Now. All the GOP activities are not known as what? Order orchestration reference object. And the order orchestration reference object is the one. I'm going to it. And then bring it to the right hand side, and then we are going to perform a collection. Order orchestration reference object, I'm going to it. And then click on submit now. Order orchestration reference object. You click on submit. So click on submit now. Click on submit. So click on submit now and click on submit. So we are not submitting it now and click on submit. We are not submitting it actually. Order orchestration reference object. So it is not submitted now and click on OK. So it is now submitted and then it will now run for some time now and click on it. You will see that it will be running for some time. Now go to what? Go to the tools and then go to the scheduled process. And then it will run for some time. So we don't have any time to make a sales order now. No, fine. Tomorrow we will now make a sales order actually. Go there and then query on my SCM 15 now. No, no. Extraction is no running now. Afterwards, the load will now begin. So, with which we complete the day now. Fine. For the, tomorrow, we will now make a sales order and then see about how we are going to transfer it actually. It will now be creating a transfer order. Right? Some more setups on transfer order is required. For, that also we'll be doing it tomorrow. Some more setups on transfer order is required. So, that all will be. So bye for now. Okay. Okay. Bye. 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 Hi, welcome back all of you. And then uh, we had the second day session on this back-to-back -back transfer actually. So yesterday we have completed the setups. Fine, click on it. And then one more setup is still pending actually. Go ahead. So go click on it. We will now perform that setup also. Oh. <sighs> so we log in with the ETH with the SCM 15. So we are going to move the material from the second org to first org. Second org is the source, and then the first org is the destination, actually. So you go there, click on it, and then you will now go to setup and maintenance. And then we go there and then do what? Manage transit times. Click on it. We'll go to the search and manage transit times. So you go to the manage transit times. Click on it. And then I will now query for the second row. And origin is what? Uh, internal. Fine. It's what? Atlanta. Atlanta to Seattle actually. Atlanta is the one. Fine, click on OK and then we make a search. Atlanta to Seattle is the one which you're going to search for it. So there are so many things that are coming up. I'm going to click on it. It will now put the destination also. Right here also it's also internal location Seattle. Seattle, you have to have Seattle. So Atlanta to Seattle, fine, make a search. I click on search. So here we'll now see about how much time it is going to take. So there are multiple methods of transfers basically, and then one of them must be a default method actually. So they have made this is what one day, and then there's a default method. So you may even send it by your C route, rail route, air route, and then so many routes are there. Right? So Oracle Transportation Management will now see what is the cost per unit, and then accordingly what happens, it will now suggest you the best method for you depending upon the scheduled ship date. So if the scheduled ship date is going to be one month later, then it will now say, send it to a bullet cart. Fine, that is going to be the cheapest one because the customer doesn't need it immediately. If he needs it tomorrow, it will now say, you send it by air actually. So depending upon when the customer needs it, the appropriate shipping method will be chosen by the system actually. So you go there, click on it, and then I will now edit it. I click on it. This has been made as the default method. Fine, click on it. So DHL, yeah, next day, yeah, I will now make it as five days. So set up. And then these things will be used with the transportation management, actually. So once when you're working on the transportation method, 
And then remember, out of all the methods, one of them must be a default shipping method for order management actually. And that will be picked up. Thank God. So the remaining methods will be chosen by the transportation management, depending upon your choice basically. So this is now set, fine for that. So you have not done what? The transit time has been set. Next is what? You go there and then give the inter-org parameters. You go to manage. Inter-org parameter. You go to manage inter-org parameter. Click on it. Manage inter-org parameter. From organization is what? 002, fine, give it app now. And then the two organizations is what? 001, fine, give it app. And then find out the network, shipping network now. Fine, click on it. You're going to have a look at it. And click on it. And then click on edit. So click on edit now, fine. So from a two to one, what happens is we need what? A transfer order actually. So enable this. Then only the transfer order will be getting created. Fine, click on it. It must be in transit. And then what happens? The result routing must be standard actually. So make it as a standard. So distance is one mile actually. Fine. MI is mile. It's okay. Uh, it doesn't matter. You don't have to have a real realistic value. Some value is okay. Possibly. So the from two to one, uh, we are going to move the material on a transfer order route. So the system will be getting a transfer order on an in-transit method. And then this result routing is standard. Fine. This is only for the expense destination. So click on okay. Not applicable for us. So click on save and close by which what happens is now completed. Fine. Done. So having done these two setups, what happens? You do log on and log in. So it is the seventh item on which what happens? We are going to create a sales order. Right? Click on sign out. And then sign in. Confirm. So go there. And then let us now sign in. And then now what you are going to do is we are now going to get a sales order for us. So every setup is now complete. Now fine. So I will now go to the order management. I will now go to the order management. I will now go to the order management. Fine, go there. And then you go to the order management again. Fine. Click on the order management and then click on the order management. And then this is a back to back transfer now. Fine. The back to back transfer. So click on the create order now. Fine. Click on the create order. We are now going to create order. Click on create order. Now we are creating an order actually. So while you're creating an order, the first thing is to populate the BU. The BU has to be populated and drop it down and then choose the BU. Use on BU and then afterwards you put the customer over here. So after the BU population, and then if you put the customer, the built account will be coming automatically. I will not say computer index. I will not choose computer service index. So the built account is going to come automatically. Otherwise, it will not come at all. If you put this and then this, it will not be coming. Go there. This is the seventh item actually. Fine. It is the T0107 and then give it a you know, giving enough go there. So the price is not coming. So here again, we are not done the pricing for it. Now, fine. This is a different instance actually. Fine. Right click and then duplicate. Let us not give all it is prices one. So that's why the price is not coming. And go there. Click on it. I will not give a cancel on this one. So click on this. I will not go there. Fine. I will not go to the order management and then go to the pricing administration. Let me give all items price of one dollar. In reality, the all items price will be zero dollars. So once when the CSR looks at zero, it will be an alarm bell for him. He will immediately ask the pricing team to give the price, right? Because we cannot sell at zero dollars. So that what happens, he will not ask them to immediately give a price. So that is the way many companies work upon. That means what it is not priced actually. All items will be having a zero price actually. You click on it. So click on the manage price list. And then it's going to be a corporate segmental price list. So Vision is using a corporate segmental price list. Fine, click on search now. It will be coming over here now. So this is the one now. Fine, click on it. Select it and then click on edit now. Vision is using this price list actually. I will now go to the all items place. Go there. Click on plus. So here, what happens? I go there, plus, and then here, what happens? I go there. It's a each, each. So it's a running each. Fine, click on okay now. <laughs> so running each is on. Fine. All the items you're having a each as a unit of address. Fine, click on the create charge, and then go down. 
and that will not give a price fine it will not give a one dollar price so it is customary to make it as a zero price so that what happens the person uh, the csr will be alerted that what happens it is not at price right fine so that is the uh, our reason for giving a zero price actually thank you okay radhika not till okay okay so go that so one dollar price has been given now fine go that click on it it's not done and click on save and close by which what happens we are not given all items price now. Save and close is not done. Thank you on it. It's all done. So the pricing for all items has been given now. Right? Now we go there and then try to get a model. Thank click on the grade order. This time you will not have any problem at all. I click on the grade order. So we are going to grade it. Drop it down and then choose your US1 business unit. Mm -hmm. Go there. Customer is what? Computer service units. So the built account will be coming automatically. Thank you. It's what? It is a T0107. And then give a tap. So now you'll be finding that the price will be coming as one. So we want to transfer some 10 quantities. Now I'm not saying out of stock, no fine. So go there. I will not put what 10 quantities. So 10 stock. It doesn't matter fine. Uh, how much is the stock? You're not showing now. We don't have any stock here, but we have a stock on the destination now. We have around 50 or just now. 10 stock is that the price is coming as one now point but if you make it a zero it will be excellent one because the csr will not proceed at all however will not go ahead at all on booking the sales order it will immediately ask the pricing team to give a price for this so click on add now point 10 items going to be transferred on two to one now i click on add so we're now adding the line now i click on it and since it is a gop enabled item there is no necessary for us to give the supply details now you go there and click on it so in this area we normally give a supply details which barrels you're going to ship that is not required at all so GOP will not take care of from where you are going to ship it actually. How you are going to source it, everything is not taken care of automatically. Then go that go on it. And then click on submit. Fine, go there by which what happens uh, this sales order will be progressing now. Fine, click on submit. So you can now see that the sales order will be getting progress now. I will now go there. I will now open up a notepad. Open up a notepad. Mm -hmm. Nine eight four six one is the one now. Nine eight four six one. Is that order number? Click on it. So it's now processing now. I go there. Uh, click on OK. Nine eight four six one. I will now go there. Good actions and then switch to fulfillment view. We are now switching to fulfillment view. So we are now switching to fulfillment view now. Click on it. Go there and then click on the hyperlink of this. Click on the hyperlink of the orchestration number. Do number. Click on it. So we are not clicking on the hyperlink on the orchestration number. So we have an order fulfillment. Generic process is running now. If somebody has customized it, then what happens? You have to run the generic process through a custom do actually. Fine. So that will be taught later actually. So scheduling has got completed. Fine. Go ahead. Click on refresh. Because of the GOP, the scheduling has got completed. So click on refresh. So request orchestration of supply is completed. The pass is completed because we are now given what? 50 days time on the items planning time runs. So we need it tomorrow and so whatever is not a problem. Had it been asked for after 50 days, then it will be waiting actually. The past task will be waiting. Then afterwards, what happens? Supply request complete now. And then click on the operation. It will be going to awaiting shipping. Awaiting shipping is the last year. It's all gone there. So click on the fulfillment lines. Fine. You go to the fulfillment lines. So click on the fulfillment lines directly. You go there. Fine. Go there. Click on. And then here will be having a supply orchestration number. Score number. A SCO is an adopter. So it maps the incoming demand to the appropriate supply actually. So click on the hyperlink of it and then have a look at it now. Can click on it. Click on the supply order number, SCO number. It maps the incoming demand to the appropriate supply actually. In this case, what happens? It is a transfer actually. So it's what? Awaiting transfer from Atlanta actually. <clears throat> o means from Atlanta actually. Not us. So click on it. Now coming. Click on it. They're not showing all this. <clears throat> So go there. It's now awaiting transfer from Atlanta. If you go there, click on it, and then go down now. So it is a transfer order. Fine. It is not a buy. It is not a make, but it is a transfer actually. So the score gives all the three recommendations depending upon the GOP setup section. Here we are now set up for this. I will now click on refresh. You will now find the transfer order number coming up on this area. So click on it. That will be getting a transfer order number. So go there. So click on the execution documents. Then click on the execution documents. And then go to the orchestration plan. So the transfer order number will be coming very short here. So it takes some time on the score area. 
it's an excellent adopter this adopter adopts to the incoming demand and then it gives a what happens the output now it gives out it maps the incoming demand to the appropriate output actually so click on refresh <clears throat> and then you go to the transfer so here i have to have the execution document number has to come in the document number. execution document also has to show me the document number over here so the document number has to come so let us know what i was pass this for some time actually mm -hmm. so now the score has now come now fine score has completed and you can now see the transfer order number coming so 139047 is the transfer order number. So go there. And now go there. Click on it. I will now say the T1 number is 139047. So the transfer order number is there. So it is now ready for picking from the source organization of 002 actually. 139047 is the source order. And click on it. There's no transfer order, no created action. And if you go to the execution documents, you can also see this. And execution documents. If you go to the orchestration plan, so the transfer order is created, then the reservation, then the interrupt transfers, then put away, and then finally it will get fulfilled actually. So till it fulfills, it is the responsibility of the SCO to do all the activities actually. So in the transfer order, they're not doing this. Now what we do is we'll now go there. I the floating icon. Now I will not duplicate. I will not go on. I will not go there. So click on it. I will now go to what supply chain execution and then I go to the inventory management. Supply chain execution. I go to the inventory management. I will now go to the inventory management. So here I will now query my transfer order number and I will now see what is the current status of the transfer order number. I am in 001 or remember. I am in 001 or and go there. Click on it. I will now go there. I will now go on and what happens? Manage transfer order is the one. A transfer order, the beauty of a transfer order is what? It is going to allocate the material and then it is going to print all the documents while you are loading the vehicle actually. So the vehicle trip ship will be loaded and then how you are going to load the vehicle? Fine, we will be loading first of all the Delhi material, then afterwards Bhopal, then Nagpur, then Hyderabad. Likewise, what happens? We will be loading it. Whatever is going to uh, load it out will be loaded last actually. So the vehicle load sheet will also be printed and then uh, all the, what happens? Uh, your deliveries. Your delivery will be having what from address and then to address, fine. From which place it is going to originate and then where it is going to go. So all the deliveries will be printed. So there will be plenty of materials will be done. And then you will also be creating a performa invoice also. Because once when the material is now moving in the road, what happens? We have to pay octroi as well as what happens? Some other transit expenses actually. <clears throat> octroi to the government actually. And then uh, the octroi officials will be uh, roaming around the gear in the road actually. So whenever it passes the excise zone, right? One excise to other excise, what happens? The excise duty is also applicable. So you have to pay the excise authorities, the excise money, and then only you can send the goods now, right? So you will now have the excise bill also getting printed actually. So the driver will be having plenty of documents in his hand before he moves out of the source organization, in this case, 002. So that is one excellent feature. Now, right? One is what? Document printing and then allocating the material, right? So depending upon your picking rule, we can very well allocate the material actually. So two powerful features of a transfer order there. So with which, what happens if you are going to move the material from 002 to 001 now, fine. That way we are going to do it now. I will now go to the manage transfer orders. So click on the manage transfer orders and then let us now query it now. Fine. So I will know the source organization is what? 002 tab and then destination organization is what? 001 and then give it tab. So between these two, what are all the transfer orders? Which are fine. Make a search now, fine. Click on search. It will not show you everything. Whatever is the open status. So it will not show you everything. <clears throat> we got one now. Right? <clears throat> we got an item. Right? T0107 is the one. Right? So the transfer order number is what? 139047, which we have already taken a copy. Right? 139047. <clears throat> so click on the view shipments and receipts. Right? Click on the view shipments and receipts. If you want to view it, what happens? It is now ready. What happens? The picking actually. So it is now requested 10 quantities. Nothing has been shipped. Nothing has been received. Nothing has been delivered to the destination organization. Fine. So this way it works out. It is now awaiting fulfillment actually. Fine. So once when the fulfillment takes place, so the score gets fulfilled actually. 
So now what we do is we will now go to the destination organization and then we will now launch the pick release actually. We are going to launch the pick release, fine. So I will now say what I will go there, right click and then duplicate. I will now right click and then duplicate. So we are now going to launch the pick release now on the destination org, on the source org. On the source org, we are going to launch the, what's called, the pick release. Now. So click on the home icon. So click on the home icon, supply chain execution, and then I go to the inventory management. I go to the inventory management. Here, what happens? You go there, fine, click on it. I will now go to the shipments now, fine, go to the shipments. And then change the R to my source R, fine. Now I'm in the destination R, now fine, go there, change the R. Go there, come on. So here, I am unable to make a change at all, fine, go there. So you go to the manage shipment lines inside, I can make a change, now, fine, click on it. <clears throat> So click on change or and then I will now change it to 001. Remember, visions org you can very fully change because they don't need any data access at all. No data access is required for the visions org. And everything is inbuilt as such. 002. <coughs> that is the source or no fine. Click on search. It's not coming. Fine. I'll now say it's Atlanta. Ah. Planta is the one more. I click on search. No, oh, it is not coming at all. So give a cancel. So give cancel and click on the change or the change or I will not drop down and then see now. I click on it. Change or only zero zero one is coming. Fine. We don't have any other access to any other org. So in such cases, what you have to do is you have to go to the manage item contents and change or you are not able to do it now. I click on it. So from the shipment area, we are unable to change this one. You go there. I will not go to the inventory. So go to the manage item quantities and then from there you change you know, it. So it doesn't allow you to change it from the shipment area. So here, whatever you go there, you put 002 and go there. And then click on OK now. It got changed. Ayya. So in the inventory, we can change it. And afterwards, what happens? You come to the shipping area. Chup chop yahan par ajao. Now I'm in ship, I go to the manage shipment line. I'm in 0, 0 to org. So via inventory manage item quantities, we can change the org actually. Right? It is not allowing you to change from this place, but from inventory item quantities, you can very well change. Mm -hmm. So the order number is a sales order number or a transfer order number. Fine, go there. One of them is the one. Right, click on it. I will not choose this now. Go there. So I will not take a copy of it. I will not paste it on this. Go there. And then make it as before. And then don't put any data in the box. So this way you can go to query. So on the source org, I'm going to query for the transfer order number. Fine, click on searching. You know, searching for it. So we will now launch the pick release actually. We are now going to launch the pick release in the source org actually. Click on it. So let us now go there and then launch the pick release actually. So it has now come up fine with that. will not go there. So click on it as a transfer order actually. So go to actions and then pick release, launch the pick list and click on it. So it will now pick and then pick create and then what happened? Pick release and pick confirm. So both the pick release and pick confirm will be done in one go for both transfer orders and sales orders. Whereas for your movement request, what happens? They are separate. And pick release and pick confirm are done in separate steps. Whereas for transfer orders and then sales orders, they are together actually. Click on the pick release. Otherwise, your what happens? Your rules stop it. If your rules stop it, then only what happens? It will be released to arrows. Otherwise, what happens? It will be normally be together actually. Go that Go there. Save and close. Otherwise, what happens? It will be released to arrows actually. Save and close. Fine. By which what happens? It is now pick release and pick confirm. Now, fine. Go that. It is now saying release to arrows, but it is a transient state. Now, fine. It will now vanish. If you go on that recovery, it will be coming to the staged area. Now, fine. Click on it. You go there and then make a search now. Fine, it will be going to the stage area. It is a transient small time. It will be there. Fine, click on it. And you can say it's not staged actually. So give a cancel. It is not staged. So this is not picked actually. If you go to this one now, transfer orders, fine, go there. It is not what happens. You go there, fine, go there. So it is not a ship actually. If I click on done, <clears throat> and then what happens? You go there, view shipments and visits again, go on and see, and go there. Nothing has been shipped actually. Now I am going to ship it actually. I am going to ship it. I am going to click on it. 
So I will now go there and then ship it actually and click on ship. So remember, when I ship it on the destination organization, it will not be automatically delivered. So once when the shipment takes place, the driver of the carrier has to give a telephonic call to the shipper that, sir, I have not delivered it in the gate actually. Then only what happens, he will now run the what's called send shipment advice concurrent. Upon send shipment advice only, what happens, it gets delivered actually. Mainly because what happens, you might have shipped it now. And then the vehicle, it has to reach the, the destination after four days' time. But if the vehicle has got punctured, and then there's no lying on the road. <laughs> and then everybody is expecting that it will be running, coming, coming, coming. And the system will also get updated. What happens? It is not so delivered, actually. And then they will now start to make the further processing, basically. But really, what happens? The physical material is not arrived, actually. So this is called differing the interface now. So we will never differ the interface from the source to destination. Actually. We will never, we will never, we'll always differ. We will always differ the interface from source to destination. So by which what happens? It won't get interface to destination immediately. That is what we made now. Right? We made a one. So yesterday we made what? During ship confirmation process, differ the interface has been enabled actually. So it will never communicate to the destination that is delivered actually. So let us know first of all ship it. I might go that on it. Don't go there. So a yeah, delivery number is now created, and then you can now see this number factor on it. So a yeah, delivery number 9016 is now open delivery number. Fine. The DHL, the shipping weather. So 90195 is not done. I will now click on the delivery number. Fine, click on the delivery number. Mm -hmm. I will now click on the delivery number. And then let me pick confirm what happens. Do the ship confirmation of this one. So click on the ship confirmation. So I am now performing a ship confirmation of this delivery now. Fine, click on it. So we are now performing a ship confirmation of this. So the, there is a warning now because we are not having weight and volume. Fine, weight and volume is not there. Fine, we are not defined it actually. So the ship confirmation because it is okay. The weight and volume is required only for your uh, what happens the transportation management. Otherwise, we can ignore it. Fine, click on yes now. Fine, do you want to continue? Click on yes. Okay, fine. Click on yes. So better now. Fine, go there. Go there. It is not shipped now. Fine. It will never go to interface at all. Interface means what? It will be interfacing to the destination R. No, fine. You go there. If you go to this place, fine, click on it. It will be shipped, but it is not yet delivered to the destination. Fine, click on it. No, go there. So you click on done. And then come back. View shipment and receipts line. Fine, click on it. So it is not shipped. But what happens? The expected receipt date on the destination R is it to arrive. It will arrive only when the, when the driver gives you a call. <coughs> That said, I have now reached the destination or and now what happens is you can run the interface or send ship on that base now. Thank God. So go there, click on it. So no run. I will now right click and then duplicate. And then we will now have a look at the in what happens the, the programs which are running along with this. Now thank click on it. We'll now go to the tools. We'll now go to the tools. Now thank you on the rules. And then go to the scheduled process. We will now click on the scheduled process. You know, have a look at the schedule process. You know, click on preparation. You won't find the send shipment advice concurrent is running. Right? Print bill of lading report, print packing slip report, blah, blah, blah. So many things are running, right? depending upon what are there. So what you want to print can be configured by the technical team, actually. But the send shipment advice is not run at all. Right? The send shipment advice will run for that particular delivery, actually. So go to this place and click on the manage shipping lines. So 90195 is the delivery number actually. So now after some time, what happens? The, the driver gives a call. They give a call. So what happens? We are now going to run the send shipment advice manually now. Click on it. So click on the schedule new interface and go to the counter. I will now save. Send shipment advice. Send shipment advice is the one. Go to the counter. Send shipment advice and click on it. So click on OK. So from shipment number, the shipment number is what? You go there. It is what? 90195 now. Why? It is 90195. You attack. It is 90195. You attack. So message type is what? Both. Yes and as well as advanced shipment notice and then advanced shipment billing notice. And then click on submit. So for which, what happens, we are now going to communicate to the destination or that what happens, he can very well receive it now. Thank you, now. This will be communicating the order entry also. That it has been shipped. 
and then the main line also will be getting interfaced now if you go there go to the manage open lines so this is now no more shipped and then it will be going to interface that it will be in, the, in this place on manage open lines yeah it's a shipping or it will be going to interface now and now it's after a ship send ship and advice is now got completed now fine come on come on now go there so go to the manage ship and lines and then and then i will now require it then what about the ship line will be going to interface now so click on search So click on cancel. So it is still shipped only. It is not an interface now. So go there. It is not an interface. Sometimes what happens, your send ship and advice will not solve this problem actually. So we have to run a master concurrent fine, called the manage shipment interface. So the manage shipment interface will now solve everything now actually. The send ship and advice, if it is not running, if not solving the problem, it's not solving the problem, then what happens? You run the master concurrent and click on the heading of the go there. So what happens? You say what happens? Manage fine shipment fine interface. This is a master concurrent. Right? This will now definitely interface it to the destination or fine. Click on it. So click on okay now fine. The mode fine. Drop it down. All you make it as all from shipment number. So I will now go there. Nine zero one nine five. Nine zero one nine five. Nine zero one nine five. What happened? Ship from organization. Fine, drop it down. You can leave it as you know. Fine, it. So we are now given the shipment number. Actually, this is not required. Fine, ship per batch is okay. Fine, we are now going to submit it. So click on submit. So this is a mandatory one. No fine. Star is a mandatory one. I will know this is a zero zero two. So this is a mandatory one. We are to give it no fine. From the zero zero two R, we are to give it no fine. Click on it. Put all the mandatory fields and then whatever they go there. Fine, click on submit. This is a master concurrent. Fine. This will not trigger the what happens the SSC simple is automatically inside now. Right? And this concurrent will definitely interface it. Right? Click on it. No wait now. The running, running, running. It may explicitly trigger a SSA or otherwise internally it will not trigger a SSA actually. Send ship on price. So manage ship and interface has got succeeded actually. We'll now go back here now. Right? Click on the manage ship and lines. So no go query also no fine. So this has to come as what interface no fine. Click on it. Expand it. So click on search. So once when you search for it, what happens? The line status is now got progress to interface no. It has now got interface. So if send shipment advice is not running, you run the manage shipment advice for the appropriate shipment lines, and then for your source or it will definitely get interface to the destination. So then no. So you go there, you will not go to the manage transfer orders. Here, what happens? You will not get the expected receipt date. Now you are given four days' time. Now right? ship date is what two days again. So it will not say on 26th, it is expected actually. When you click on them. The expected receipt date will be coming only when the it is interfaced to destination. Now, when you click on them. And then click on the view shipment results now. Find the command. The command and see. When you look at it, what happens? You'll be getting the so 22, 23, 24, 25. Fine. So it is no expected on 25, 11 actually. So this expected receipt date will come only when you run the SSA or manage shipment interface in a proper manner. If that doesn't run, what happens? You run this now, right? Once when you run it, it'll be gone. Now what happens? We have to go to the destination or and then we have to receive it and then deliver it also. Receive the item and then deliver it also. We will now go to the placement, click on cancel. So this is already interface, click on cancel. <coughs> go there. Go there. I will now go to what happens? Go there. Inventory management. Fine. Go there. Now we have to change the order. No? Fine. Again, to change the order, what happens? You go there. You go to the inventory and then go to manage the item quantities and then change it. No? That is the best place. No? Fine. Click on change order. I will not change it to what? 001. 001. I am changing it. No? Fine. Click on OK. Now I am in the destination or 001 is my destination or Fine. Go there. Click on it. And then here we go to what? Drop down and then go to the results. No? We are going to make a result. No? Fine. Click on it. And then here, what happens? We will not receive expected shipment. So now we are going to expect a receipt on the transfer order number. So we will now see what is the transfer order number. Fine, go there. The transfer order number is what? You go there. Fine. 139047. If you put 139 and then give a tap, the remaining numbers will be coming automatically. Then click on search. So we are going to make a gate receipt now. Fine, select it. And then click on receive in the gate now. Fine, click on receive in the gate. So we are now receiving in the gate. Now, click on it. So we are now receiving it at the gate now. 
So go there. So click on the show result only. It will not show. 10 is expected from the uh, source organization. It will not show you exactly how much is expected now. I will go on it. So based upon it, you are not going to make a gate result. So the gate result is now made now. The document number is the transfer order number actually. 10 is number. Right? So click on the create result. So while you are creating the result, what happens? We can even enrich it to the packing step. Man. The one, one, two, three is the packing step. And the shipping method, we can enrich it. Number of packing million is four. No, so these enrichment is always a value addition to your billable adding. Notes what? Jingich account. You give all these things now and click on submit. So later on, when you take a report on a particular GR number, it will now give you lots of information. Value addition is there. Thank you, Madam. So a GRN number gets created in the gate actually. I'll go back on it. So the GRN number gets created. 52679 is the GRN number. If you go there and then click on it, now fine. Now it is received is 10. Now fine. Click on that. And then again click on the view shipment that receives. What happens? You can now see that. What happens? It is now received is 10 actually. Now we'll now go there and then deliver it. Now fine. Click on it. We'll now go there. Fine. Click on it. We'll now go and then deliver it. Fine. Click on it. 52679. Now fine. Click on it. We'll now go there. Click on it. Will not perform put away now. And put away results. Will not perform put away now. And put away. So go there. 526. And then give it a tab. And then click on search. So 526, 7, 9, I think. Oh, so many things are coming. 526, 7, 9. So click on search. Now find click on search. It's not showing on the phone. And then here we are going to put it now. I click on it, put away. So once when you do the put away, this activity is now totally complete. Now I click on it. And then everything is now done. Fine, go to inventory. And then we will now say while you're putting it away, we have to say in which sub inventory you have to put it. I will now say stores. So the back to back transfer is now completed. Then what happens if we have to ship it to the customer also? Well, so click on submit by which what happens? The back to back transfer is now complete. So we are now completing the back-to-back -back transfer now. The put-away transaction is now created. So click on OK. You know that. If you go there and then see this stuff, I click on it. The delivery also will be done. Click on done now. And then click on the view shipments and results. So it's all completed. So the whole process of what transfer order is now fully complete, actually. Everything is now complete. Now we have to go there and then have a look at the order. So click on the home icon and then you go to the orders. Now fine. We'll now go to the order management. We will now go to the order management. Order management. And then here, I will now go to the order management. And then there, I will now go to what advanced and then make a search for the order. The advanced, I will now go there and then search for the order. 98461. 98461 is the one. I will go there. So click on it and then click on search. And then click on the hyperlink on the order number. I will now click on the hyperlink on the order number. I will now switch to fill units. Actions and then switch to fill units. So the back to back transfer is now complete. Now I go there. So you go there and then click on the what happens here? Do number. If you click on the do number, it is now expecting everything. So if you go there, click on it. Goods are available. So you click on the Supply order number, I click on it. Uh, in the second one, what happens if you go to the execution documents, I go there. Transfer is there. Orchestration plan. Click on it. Transfer. Ah, nothing is visible here now. Go to the first line and then come back to the second line. Now everything is visible. So put away is also completed. Now, once when you ship it to the customers, then it gets fulfilled actually. Is now, getting... now we are going to ship it now. I click on it. We'll now go there, click on it. We will now click on done now. Now we will now go to the shipments now. Fine. In the inventory management, we will now go there. Fine. I am in 001 only. I click on it. I will now go to the shipments now. Fine. Drop it down. I will now go to the shipments. And then I go to the manage shipment lines. And then query for the order number. Order number is what? 98461. You go there. I will now say 98461. I will now make it as what before. 
and then here whatever i will not make a search now i will not launch the pick release now i click on it actions and then i will not do the pick release so the pick release is not getting launched actually i click on okay it gets launched when give us even close so by which what happens we have the material available now all the material has been brought to the second or first storage actually and then go there it will be staged actually so click on search now find now find there see give a cancel and then come to the main line of it and no stage click on the shipment number and then will not perform a ship confirmation will not perform a ship confirmation so click on ship confirmation now find click on ship confirmation so here what happens we don't have any problem of stopping it actually only on the second door we are shopping the stopping the what is called your ssc when schedule send ship and advice here not we are not stopping it frankly concept conversion it will be getting interface to order entry immediately now only from second to first we stopped it whereas here we are not stopping anything at all from that so if we go there and make a search it will be shipped and then finally what happens it will be getting interface now i click on it now so make a search click on search so after some time what happens it will be getting interface now you go to the manage orders now fine so once it is interfaced this will now be coming to ship right actually you now go there what are the manage orders in the manage orders supply online now fine you go to the called manage orders what right supply order is been taken down and then come to the main line now in this place what happens if you click on refresh it is awaiting shipping it is not shipped and then here if you go there here what happens it will be interface here there is no nothing to stop here now fine click on search now fine nothing to stop so it is the interface actually the interface now what happens if you go there and then have a look at the fine go to the manage orders fine go there click on it it is not going to, it will be awaiting billing actually then click on refresh now it will be ultimately going to awaiting billing awaiting billing is the last state of the order entry actually that means what it has been interfaced to the order entry area you know interface to order entry area so it's waiting for the thing to go to awaiting billing and once when you perform the import of the invoice then the line gets closed so it is indirectly the responsibility of the csr to what happens that close each and every sales order line as well as the header also line and header closing is the is the csr's responsibility actually is now still ship actually and then go there so click on refresh So click on that and come the main page. So it is not going to awaiting the line. So we are not done a back to back transfer. So through which what happens? We are not done what creation of what? Yeah, this thing. So now what we do is we will not try to create a invoice also. Fine. It has now reached the interface tables of AR. I don't know that AR is now set properly or not. I am not very sure about it. So I will not go to what? I will not go to the monitor process. Fine. Go there. Click on the schedule new process. I will now say import order invoice. I don't know whether it has been set properly or not. I will not say import order invoice. I am going to click on it. So we will not try to run this. No, I click on it. If it is all set properly, it will be running. No, I click on it. So the business unit is what? Here is one. Because this is done by AR team actually. So the transaction source is do now. Fine, drop it down. And then choose the distributed order orchestration. Go there. Click on it. So go there. And then what I was I can even put the sales order number over here. And specific sales order number I can very well run it. Fine. So that means that's number transaction number. Sales order number. Fine. Go ahead. Click on it. I will now choose what nine eight four six one. Nine eight four six one is the one. Fine. I will now say nine eight four six one is the one. Go there. And then let me submit it. I am running it for the specific sales order number. For importing it into the base table. Fine. Go ahead. So click on submit. Now click on submit. Okay, no doubt. So now the import order invoice is running. If it gets succeeded properly, then what happens? The line gets closed actually. So it is the responsibility of the CSR to what happens? They push everything properly into ARI. Then his activity of his job over selling the job is over. Then afterwards, 
it is the payment collection activity of AR, which is not pending on their side actually. Right? Running, running. So import or invoice running. It is not complete and not frankly on it. So notify feeder system of receivables transaction of frankly on it. So this is a report also is running of frankly on it. Let us now go there and then query or manage all of frankly on it. Go there to on it. And then click on done and then come back on. And then come back on level. Go there. I need four six one of frankly on it. Ah, this is one of frankly on it. And then here one of them, go there, come back, done, and then come back one level. Okay, okay. So the main line, when they go there, or no problem on the main line. So click on done, then come back here. Okay, okay. So it's not built actually. So once when it is built, what happens if you refresh it, it will be closed also. The line gets closed. So once when the line is built, what happens, the line gets closed. So similarly, what happens is that we have to, no, the line is closed. Now, he has to close the header also. The header we will not close now. Right? So if there are 10 lines are there, you will know uh, what happens. He has to close all the 10 lines. And then finally, the header also has to close. So what you do is you will not go that frank click on it. You will not run what one concurrent now. Uh, uh, this is what? Close. Right? Update. One second. One. Update percentage point close percentage. No, regarding the concurrent name, no fine. Update close. Yeah, update or close sales order. So click on okay. We have an update or close sales order. Click on it. And then this is going to be header now. The capital H now. And then the interval is going to be zero. Immediately close. So this will now close the header also. If you do update or close sales order, click on okay. And this will be closing the header also. Update or close sales order. So once when the CSR in the evening, uh, when they have talked to the manager, how many lines he has closed and then how the headers he has closed. Because if there are 10 lines of that, only when all the 10 lines are closed, then only you can close the header actually. Because I go to the manager orders. And then if you click on refresh, the header will be closed. So if there are 10 lines of that, only when he closes all the 10 lines, the header can be closed actually. So it is his fulfillment activity of what happens, how many he has closed today. If he is unable to close something, what happens, he has to give a reasoning about why he is unable to close. So that way, he will be discussing with the management actually. So this completes a back-to-back -back transfer and then uh, shipping to the customers, creating the AR invoice, and then closing the lines as well as closing the header also. Bye for now. And then tomorrow, we will now see a back-to-back -back make actually. Tomorrow we have two sessions, isn't it? Am I correct? Hello. <clears throat> Can you open up your video? Hi. So tomorrow we are going to have a two sessions. Yeah, yeah. At 2 p.m. we are going to begin now. Okay, okay then, yeah, bye. So we will now begin at 2 p.m. tomorrow and then we will now see a back-to-back -back make actually. Bye for now.